Gränsfors as a company, first I would say it's a company with a very long history. We have been making axes and tools for timbering and forestry since the beginning of the 1900. Although the tradition, or the, if you really go back in this area where we are right now, the village of Gränsfors, they have been doing forging of different tools since the 1800s. But uh, the company Gränsfors was started in 1902. So Gränsfors is a company with a long tradition, over 110 years. And uh, we are still today forging axes in the same manners as from the very beginning. So Gränsfors is a traditional company that bears a long tradition of axe making. Um, Gränsfors has kind of a mission right now to keep on uh, spreading this tradition to our customers and visitors here. Uh, it was a big problem in, in the 70s because of the oil crisis. And nearly all, all axe factory made the same mistake. Uh, during the oil crisis, everybody started burning wood. So they made a lot of splitting axes and splitting mold and sold them locally because that was very much, it was very profitable and they missed the export industry. Uh, and then uh, after a couple of years, uh, they have lost the export customers forever. Uh, this company uh, went bankruptcy in 1985 and I bought uh, the company. What is significant for a Grandsfors X is functionality, uh, feeling, quality and the kind of minimalistic choice of materials to really take down the needed materials to what is really necessary. So that is one way to describe Grensfors. It looks very simple, but it's actually not. It's a very sophisticated product. For example, you take the blacksmith, when he produces the axe head, it has to be perfectly made, otherwise the axe head will be twisted compared to the handle. Second, if you take the grinder, who grinds it and anneals the axe head, it also has to be perfectly made because you can really uh, destroy the axe edge if you grind it too long, for example. And when you put in the axe handle into the axe head, it also has to be very well made because otherwise the whole axe will be twisted. So all these different steps in the production has to be very well made. That's one part. But the second part is material that we use. Sure, it's just a piece of steel and some wood, but for us it's not. Uh, the steel is high quality Swedish steel and the wood is hickory, which has very long fibers, very strong and it's perfect if you want to have it in an axe because you have a lot of force when you use an axe. And the third material is the vegetable tanned leather that we used. It's Swedish tanned leather, very high quality leather. You can find leather whatever, but we have chosen to use high quality leather from Sweden. So all these different steps, the production and the materials working together to have the perfect product. Som smed så tillverkar du yxan från från ett stålämne som du hettar upp till ungefär 1200 grader. Jag klipper i rätt längd. Märker ut med hjälp av en press i vart hålet ska sitta i stålbiten och sen pressa ut ett stansar ut ett hål i den biten och sen emellan eh, olika verktyg som sitter i pressen formar den yxa som du för tillfället gör då. Och när du är nöjd med resultatet så stansar du in dina initialer och när det är klart så hänger man upp den på på ett ställe där den får vila till nästa dag då den går vidare i, i processen. Som slipare då på Gränsfors får vi först färdiga yxämnen från smidjan. De eh, grovslipar man med 50 kornsband. Man lägger äggvinkel på olika modeller, olika vinklar ska vara. Därefter härdar man, anlöper 
efter det slagtestar man så att man ser att det inte har blivit någon helbräcka. Sen trömlar vi yxorna så att vi får dem rena och fin. Och efter det så är det ju finslipen som tar över. Då slipar man ju vissa modeller på nacke. Och så sen så slipar man äggen. Då får man bort grovrepen efter 50 kornsband. Man får till en bra råägg som man då sen tar bort i lumpmaskin då. Efter det då är han blank och, och vass då. Och efter det så skickar man upp dem till skaftningen. Jag sätter på ett skaft på en yxa. Jag ska då se till så att den ser bra ut. Jag ska se till så att den blir rak. Den har rätt vinkel på yxan. Att slipningarna också ser bra ut. Och sedan efter det skickar jag vidare det till kvalitetskontrollen och utleveranserna. Där jag också jobbar. Mitt jobb där är att jag ska se till så att alla stegen är rätt. Och det betyder att jag ser att skaftet sitter bra, att det är rätt slipning på yxan, att det inte är några sprickor i skaftet. Är det då sprickor då tar jag bort dem och skickar tillbaka dem så att de får skafta om dem. Jag kollar så att alla stämplar är med och att yxan har rätt form. Sedan förser jag yxan med ett läderskydd och en yxbok som jag knyter fast. Sedan skickar, packar jag ner dem i lådor och skickar dem till rätt kund. Well, a great axe. Uh, I would say uh, it's, it's of course it's about taste, but for for us a great axe is something that can really be used uh, for what it's uh, supposed to be used for. The balance is very important. The sharpness of the axe is important, and the straightness of the axe is important. A central part of a grand source axe is the way it is produced. Our thought on sustainability is threefolded, I would say. First of all, you have to have a product which is very high quality. Product that lasts for a long, long time, of course. But it's also the product in combination with environment. We have to make a product which is environmentally friendly, of course. So we try to do that in any way we, we can. And the third thing is we have to have a product which is good for the person who has actually produced it, for the blacksmith, for the grinder, and so on. So that's our thought on sustainability. The product in combination with environmentally friendly, in combination with the person behind it. We, we will uh, always keep the way we produce the axis. Uh, we can develop some things, but the forge will pretty much look the same. It's important because that's the way they should be produced. We will continue to be conscious about the materials that we use for the axis and also the handles and also the, the sheets, the leather sheets. About six, seven years ago, uh, I sold Gramsos Brooks to two of my sons, Adam and Daniel. They have, uh, they have run it very, in a, in a good way, absolutely, together with all the people working here, of course. Our vision for the future is that this company would, would last another 100 years. We are 100 years old already. So everything we do is actually, we take a long, long perspective in it, a 100 year perspective. Yeah, yeah, for example, the energy consumption. I mean, we have a perspective that we want to be self-reliant on energy consumption. And that's quite a long vision that we have. Yeah, exactly. And also another vision is that we would like to educate even more people around us that it's possible to make a high quality product in a good environmentally friendly way with good working conditions, that all these things comes together. And of course, we can be much, much better in all these three things, that, but that's, that's our vision, yeah.